G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, the big boys have started to pump <laughs> and a few of the other uh, positions are starting to suffer. But what a pump. Let's have a look over here. Bitcoin currently trading at 10,100. It was up around 10,500, 10,400 earlier and uh, we've seen a little bit of a pullback. Ethereum's had a pump, but I mean, look at this in the last seven days. Bitcoin's gone up 10%. And Ethereum has gone up by 34%. Wow, what an absolute cracking pump. Is this now the beginning of the next bull run? And again, technically some people could say we might have been in a bull run since 2019 when it hit its all-time lows, and I guess they could be right. But is this, you know, where we're starting to break outside uh, of those uh, legitimate downtrends? Well, Let's have a look, we'll find out, but Bitcoin, what a move. Currently sitting, uh, again, in the, above 10,000, which is really, really good, and Ethereum has broken the $300 mark. Now, what I find really interesting is this, the overall market cap. We're at about 270, 280 sort of billion, and we were ranging around there for ages. Now that Bitcoin's finally made a big move, we've jumped up. 30 billion dollars so from 280 ish to 310 30 billion so maybe even a bit more because we were sitting around that uh 270 billion dollar mark so obviously a lot of money has started to flood in to, to the cryptocurrency markets and obviously a lot of the money is going to here now something that i've found really really interesting is you know everyone's been on this uh DeFi hype train and look i'm i'm one of them i've been on it and i'm going to continue to stay on it but let's have a look what's happened to the DeFi market. So this is the DeFi one over on Coin Market Cap. Red, 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 red everywhere. I mean, there's a couple that have still got green, you know, Bancor, Terra, and Wrap Bitcoin, Reserve Rights, Numeraire. So there's a couple there that have I got some greens. But overall, it's just bleeding. So all these profits that everyone's uh, made in the uh, DeFi space, well, not all of them, but a lot of them, have quickly been taken and have been put into uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin. So, you know, people were talking about, uh, was the uh, DeFi a bubble? Well, that goes to show you it wasn't quite a bubble because it hasn't popped for some unknown reason. It's just people have now taken their money, uh, not so much all their money, but definitely taken some profits and now put it into Bitcoin. People are just trying to find the things that are getting ready to pump and move and get their money into that. And I don't think that's a bad idea either. But you really want to try and be right on the trend as it's changing and not too far behind. So I got into uh, my DeFi plays really early and I'm still up uh, in all of mine. I haven't taken any profits from my DeFi uh, at the moment and I'm not planning to take any profits uh, for quite some time. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, if something's not performing and just won't do well, then I might have to cut my losses. But yeah, I'm still up on uh, a majority, if not basically all of my DeFi plays. So I don't have any uh, issues on not cashing in at the moment because DeFi is still going to have another pump. It's not done and dusted yet. It's just everyone's getting on that Bitcoin train, Bitcoin train, uh, and the Ethereum train. But as they start to rise and go up in price, these will just get dragged up as well. So I don't think that that means the no money, or not so much no money, but the prices of these won't ever move again. Uh, it's that old saying, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. So the price of those of every other coin will rise a little bit when uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin start to really pump. But very, very interesting that, yeah, as soon as Bitcoin started to move, just red. Red, 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 red throughout the DeFi. Everyone's taking their profits and putting them into Bitcoin and Ethereum. And that's not a bad idea. But again, I, I got into my DeFi uh, plays some time ago and I'm still up. 100, 200, 300% uh, on most of them, even now after all of this. So they can drop down another sort of 50% again and, and I'll still be in the green. So I won't be uh, cashing out of those anytime soon. Some people may say, oh, you should have taken the profits and then put it into Bitcoin and Ethereum. Yes, look, that would have been nice if I had have known it was going to happen, but it all kind of happened a little bit too quickly for me and I couldn't get uh, on the jump. But again, I'm still up in my DeFi plays, so I'm happy and I'll keep them there. But 
now that we can see that uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are starting to move, you just have to come over and look at all the uh, stories that are going around. Bitcoin price soars on strong weekly close. Bitcoin price rallied at 10K, has not shaken BTC holders. ETH price hits 2020 high. Key reasons why out why our ETH outperforms others. So lots and lots of hype behind this, and it's about time. Now, I was somewhat slightly concerned that uh, I thought Bitcoin was going to have a dump. Uh, or I shouldn't say a dump. <laughs> That's not a really nice way, but a bit of a retracement. Uh, but it doesn't seem to have done it. And I, for one, I'm not complaining. But, you know, again, don't think that uh, it's just automatically going to go in this big mad bull run and there's no chance of it pulling back. Uh, there definitely is a chance, although I'm less confident of that now. I, I, I suspect that the real bull run uh, probably has started. And I'll go over and show you why. So go over here to my trusty uh, Bitcoin chart. So again, I've had this uh, running in, uh, on a few of my vlogs earlier. The average price for Bitcoin for about the last three years has been ranging between $6,000 and $8,000. So we've been well above. We got up to nearly $20,000 back in 2017. We've got all the way down to the low of sort of $3,000 in 2019. And that's what I said. You could technically say the bull run started around about here because it's made its way up, started to range and fell into that average price range. We had the whole uh, pandemic thing. So it dropped down below and even below our trend lines, but it only wicked down there. And then we've started to make our move back up. But what we need to do is focus on here. What can we see over here? Oh my, it's broken out of the trend line. Now, it's still early. The day is not over trading uh, right here. So we'll have to wait and see if it stays and closes above because it's already pulled back from, there we go, sort of 10,300 on Bitstamp anyway. I did see it uh, on uh, the coinmarketcap.com and I think it was trading around sort of 10,400 somewhere. So we've had a bit of a pullback already, but this is great news. If we can close above here, then that's great news. I will believe that uh, the next bull run has likely started to occur. Again, technically it could have happened way back in 2019, uh, but you know we haven't broken those trend lines. But what I am watching for is it's not a bit of a sort of fake out. So we break out and we pump up here and then have a quick sell off and end up back down here around that $8,000 mark. Now, I'm not sure that that's going to happen and I feel less likely that that's going to happen. But again, whenever things get really exuberant and everything's really, really positive, unless you're just in a, a proper bull run, generally we see uh, Bitcoin kind of have a bit of a pullback, a, a bit of a retracement. So we'll wait and see, but this is promising. As you can see, three days in a row, three green candles, and we'll have to watch what happens. But what I want to have a look at also is because we're outside of uh, this trend line, really, if we can break above sort of 10,500, then I would suspect we jump up to around this kind of $12,000, $13,000 level pretty quickly. I don't think it will take too long. And if we kind of zoom out a little bit, so here's our sort of $12,000, $13,000 level around there. And as you can see, we've had uh, historical resistance uh, at this before. So I suspect we'll probably get up here fairly quickly and then we'll have a bit of a pullback. But really, once we kind of break three, break free, I should say, of the $13,000 range, 13, 14,000, that's more a wick as opposed to a candle, I can see us quite quickly getting up to, well, where was that last bit of resistance? 17,000. And then we get right up to that 20,000 pretty quickly. Now, the way Bitcoin runs when it's really getting on a pump, uh, uh, well, not even when it's really getting on a pump, just when it's starting to move, uh, I would say it will cover the kind of $10,000 range fairly quickly. Now, I'm not talking in a day. It's not going to do that in a day. But I definitely see us sort of up around this $20,000 uh, $20, mark within the next few months, in all fairness. Now, there's going to be some more pumps and more retracements and more pumps and more retracements. But what is it now? Let's say it's nearly August. Let's say uh, August, September, October. I would say October, November. I would not be surprised if we're testing that $20,000 level. That would be uh, my gut feeling. Again, it's not financial advice. I'm not saying that Bitcoin is going to do that. But uh, having spent some time in the crypto uh, sort of space, uh, 
I can I can easily see it getting to twenty thousand around November. Now, no guarantees, but I would be very surprised if we haven't broken into all new time highs by let's say January next year. If we haven't done it in November, then around sort of December, January, I would expect us to be above here. And I can tell you right now, once we break above that sort of $19,600, $20,000 mark, that's when a lot of uh, big money is gonna start to get in. Now there's been the smart institutional money that has gotten in, grayscale and things like that. But there's a lot of people out there who still, you know, they're not paying attention to the cryptocurrency markets full stop. I can tell you right now, they don't believe in it. And so they would probably think it's just still going down. It won't be until all of a sudden somebody says something or there's a newspaper article or they read a story, Bitcoin has, uh, you know, gone to its new all time high. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of that's going to be called the dumb money. And there is institutional dumb money. Don't worry about it. But when uh, that occurs, that is when some more money, people are gonna go, oh, Bitcoin, I thought that was dead. And then all of a sudden they're gonna be jumping on it uh, and they'll be jumping on it when it's going into uh, uncharted territory. Now, I'm not saying getting uh, into Bitcoin at 20,000 would be a bad idea. I'm just saying once things are breaking into uncharted territory, it's really hard to know where it's gonna stop. It could double, triple, quadruple after that, who knows? But the chances are more likely that it's probably closer to uh, its end point than it is further away. Really, the best time to get into Bitcoin in the last few years was back over here. Now, I wasn't smart enough to get back in then. I thought it was going to still go low and I'd lost a bit of faith uh, in cryptocurrencies because I got in uh, back in sort of uh, November, October, September 2017. And so all I saw was Bitcoin skyrocketing and skyrocketing and skyrocketing. And I just thought, wow, this is amazing. It's never going to stop. And then unfortunately it did stop and it just kept getting lower and lower. And again, I still followed it through some of this. It got down and then it pumped back up and I thought, oh, here we go. Bitcoin's coming back and then it fell down off and then it was coming back up. And again, this is kind of roughly where I lost uh, a little bit of faith in Bitcoin was around that April. And it wasn't until sort of kind of around about back here, May 2019, that I started to pay a bit more attention to it, but I still wasn't sure. I was expecting another sell off again. Uh, and it slowly rose and then I started to put some more money into it uh, late last year. Uh, yeah, sort of somewhere around about here I started to put some money back into cryptocurrencies. Now I never sold any of mine, so all the money that I put in, not that it was that much, but the money I put back in, I never sold any. I still held on to it, so it wasn't until it was kind of around about over here, I did see it dump and I was going, oh God, here we go, Bitcoin's gonna dump again. But, you know, I started to pay more attention and really get into it. And again, go back and look at old cycles and just remember Bitcoin's done this, a not a million times, it hasn't been around for that long, but it's done it before. That's the cycle. So I watched it and it pulled down. And then when I saw it jump back up here again, so again, this is uh, later last year, that's when I started to realize this isn't done. And I got my chart out and started to map things and paid attention to previous uh, charts. And that's when I saw it's kind of ranging sideways and it's really kind of constantly sitting in and around uh, its average price, which again was 6,000 to $8,000. Yes, it would drop down into it, but hey, look what it did. It pumped out, got above it again. And I thought, oh, yep, Bitcoin's on. I now understand it all and what's going on. Then we had the massive COVID thing and when that happened, I was lucky enough I had uh, some money and I got in pretty quickly. Now, I didn't get in down here, unfortunately. I got in more down around here. I think 5400 was the cheapest I got some Bitcoin at. And then I kind of bought all the way through to around about 7400 I haven't bought any Bitcoin since then. Uh, I really haven't bought too much since then at all. I, I, I got in most of uh, my positions in here. So that's what I mean. I'm still up, uh, even in my DeFi coins. Some of them were... 400% up and now they're down around the kind of 200% and I'm not too concerned even if they fall all the way down to up just 100% I've still doubled my money and DeFi isn't done it's just people are chasing the trends and look nothing wrong with that that is uh, one of the best investment sort of ideas that I have come across is don't chase the trends follow the trends if you're chasing it it means you're automatically behind it but if the trend is everything is going down and has been for a while, so if you had kind of watched here and saw it do this and saw it do this and got in here, 
I would probably be trying to short the market. Now, I don't do leverage trading, but I would already be saying, all right, let's wait and see if it changes. And then when it goes down, I'd be, no, it hasn't changed. Pumped up a little bit, I'd be right. Let's wait and have a look. Now it's gone down a little bit. I'll just keep an eye out for it. Now it's gone up and I would be waiting for it to have a retracement and then go back up again and then have a retracement and go back up again. But it didn't do that. And that's how you follow the trend. The trend is this is going down. Will it pump up a little bit? Yes. Then it goes down. We travel sideways. We're waiting. The trend is it went down. Pumped up a little bit. All right. Will it retrace and pump up some more? No, it retraced all the way down to here. And really, this is where you'd want to watch it. Pumped up. It had its retracement. Cool. But didn't drop down lower than the last low. It actually made a higher low. Pumped up. Retraced but it didn't fall down lower than the last low or the last low before that. And that's how you start to understand the trend. Yes, it will uh, sell off for a while, but then it'll pump up, retrace, but higher than the last time. Pump up, retrace, higher than the last time. And that's what I mean by follow the trend. Make sure you're onto it regularly and you're understanding and seeing what it's doing over the long term. You know, more than the short term, a lot of people trade off, you know, the 15 minutes and the four hours and things like that. And that's great. You can do that, but I'm not that savvy. I'm more an investor than a trader. So I just simply try and follow the trends. And again, when I saw the trend here where it was coming down, but it was staying on the kind of high end of the average range for the last few years, I knew it was time to get back in. I had no doubt that it was still going to have sell-offs on occasions. And it did. It had a massive sell-off. But I could see it was coming down the 8,000, finding support, pumped up, dropping down near the 6,000, but traveled sideways, then went back above 8,000. So that's what I mean. Let the trend be your friend. Follow the trend. But just know, once you start to break into uncharted territory, and that is IE, you're going above old all-time highs, you're probably closer to the end than you are uh, the, the beginning. So just know that at some stage, uh, it's going to have a sell-off and then you're going to have to find the next uh, low after that. But what I wanted to do is also go over here. So good old Ethereum. So let's go to Ethereum USD. This is the one I'm looking for. All right, so let's have a look. We can go way back over here. Uh, Ethereum was $6. And when was this? D December 2016. And look what happened after that. It went from $6 pumped all the way up i mean we had one big red candle here that was more a wick though but it went from six dollars to what do we got here ninety dollars so over 10 x uh fairly quickly in a matter of months then we another had another big surge so it's gone from six dollars to 384 dollars and it's had a retracement but it's pumped up a little bit and again the lows kept getting higher and higher until we got to its all-time high of around $1,500, $1,600 over here. Now, it's obviously dumped off. It's gone through the bear market around about the same time as Bitcoin. It's found its bottom, and then it started to slowly but surely find its way back up, setting higher lows all the time. Till we got to its peak, then it had a sell-off, then the trend was down for a while till it found its all-time low. But again, it really just sort of ranged in and around here. I could set up almost the identical uh, chart uh, to Bitcoin on Ethereum. Not quite identical, but close enough. So then we've started to range sideways. Then it pumps up. Then it sells off a little bit. And then it probably would have kept going sort of slowly up. But we had the COVID. So COVID happened. Nothing we can do about that. And then all of a sudden, it started to find, it, find its way back up. We traveled sideways a bit, we had a bit of a pump again, traveled sideways a bit, had a bit of a pump, traveling sideways, and now look at it, it's just absolutely pumping. So this is day after day after day now that it's green candle after green candle. Now there's probably gonna be a sell off at some point, a bit of a retracement. People are gonna to start to uh, collect and take some of their profits. And look, if you've got into 100%, uh, 200% profits, you know, it might not be a bad idea to take some profits. But again, I got in uh, back here. God, what was I buying it for? I think it was something ridiculous. I got it around about $120 or something. Uh, some ETH, uh, not all of it. Uh, a majority of it was more around the uh, $200, $250 mark. Uh, 
sorry, that was Australian, so more around the uh, 180, 200 sort of dollar mark was where I was buying at US. So yeah, I don't have any plans on selling off. Now, that is uh, the USD chart. Let's have a look at the BTC chart. Sorry, so we come over here and have a look at it. So again, we had these big sell-offs and things like that, and then we range sideways, bit of a sell-off, range sideways, pump. But let's jump over here. Look at the Satoshi level that it's gone up from. So what do we got there? Oh God, what number is that? 200 and something thousand Satoshis, and then it's pumped up to like sort of 300. So it's moved 100,000 Satoshis or so. I don't know if that's 100,000, it might be more. What do we got? That's 30,000. Yeah, I think it's two, no, I don't think that's a million, is it? Uh, anyway, it's had a big move. I can't uh, read that at the moment. I probably need to get my glasses, but it's had quite a big move. Uh, and, and again, so it's really leading the way and it's been doing a lot better than uh, Bitcoin uh, in this initial pump. And there was something that happened back in 2017. They called it the flippening, where they believed that uh, Ethereum was going to outpace Bitcoin. it will be interesting to see whether that'll happen this time. Uh, you know, I'm not sure it will, but yeah, interesting anyway. Anyway, I've been uh, going on for a little while. I don't want to take up too much of everyone's time. So yeah, big moves. Let's wait and see whether they can hold those big moves or if there'll be some retracement, which I'm sure there will be at some stage, but whether it'll keep continuing to set higher highs and higher lows. And if it keeps doing that, both Bitcoin and Ethereum and any coin for that matter, if they're setting higher highs and higher lows and it's been going on for a while, then that shows you what the trend is and let the trend be your friend. Follow the trend, but just be ready, especially once you're into new price territory, so it's setting all time highs, that it's probably going to start coming back sooner rather than later. But exactly how much sooner that is, we don't know. All right, that's it for me. Take care, uh, be kind to one another, stay safe. I'm pretty sure most people are making some gains today if they're in the big boys and I'll catch you next time.